Well, Miller Lite is the latest beer brand facing a stunning backlash for a man bashing ad. The US beer famously used Playboy models in its signature campaigns throughout the 90s and early 2000s. Meghan Markle, of course, went on to be a suitcase girl on Deal or No Deal, fronted this ad for the brand in 2010. But the new commercial strikes a rather different tone. Here's a little known fact. Women were among the very first to brew beer ever. From Mesopotamia to the Middle Ages to colonial America, women were the ones doing the brewing. Centuries later, how did the industry pay homage to the founding mothers of beer? They put us in bikinis. Wow. Look at this shit. Wild. It's time beer made it up to women. So today, Miller Lite is on a mission to clean up not just their shit, but the whole beer industry's shit. Terrible. Aren't men awful? Awful. Women in bikinis. Shocking. Who would have thought any woman would want to be in a bikini? Admired by men. I mean, it's just the last thing you'd be wearing a bikini for, right? Its parent company has trashed its own brand's mud wrestling cat fight ad from 2003 in its defense, saying women shouldn't be forced to mud wrestle in order to sell beer. Why not? I thought mud was good for the skin. Compared to Bud Light's notorious campaign featuring influencer Dylan Mulvaney, and so far cost the company more than $6 million in market capitalization. I think it was $6 billion, actually. Um, because, uh, actually, it turned out men didn't want to be told that they're idiots and that, actually, this beer was aimed at transgender women who are biological males who are pretending to be women. So are they using the power of advertising to make a powerful and progressive social point to these companies or just deliberately self-harming themselves by alienating their core customers? I'm joined by former Levi's brand president Jennifer Say, political journalist Ava Santino. Right, well, welcome to both of you. Jennifer Say, there seems to have been a run of these kind of adverts. And it goes back, I think, to the Gillette, infamous Gillette one in the wake of the Me Too campaign, which is a perfectly laudable campaign. I'm not knocking it at all, but the Gillette campaign that ran after it, which basically, rather than celebrating masculinity, became a tirade of abuse about effectively all men are awful monsters, unless they can prove otherwise. And Gillette lost, I think, $9 billion off the bottom line until we did a complete reverse ferret and went back to celebrating masculinity again. And we're going to see the same thing with Bud Light. I suspect we'll see the same thing with, with Miller Light. What is going on here? Why are these companies surrendering to this... Well, what Elon Musk would call the woke virus. Just say the right thing. Well, I would, um, you know, having been in the boardrooms and executive rooms for a, a very long time, I would call it woke washing. Um, it may be a cynical take, but I can tell you it is true. These brands are thinking if we align ourselves with the perceived values of younger consumers, Gen Z and millennials, um, they'll like us and they'll buy our product. We don't have to talk about product. We don't have to talk about product benefit. We'll just align ourselves with their values so that we can make money off of it. Um, and it's a it's a it's a virtue signal to distance themselves from you know past campaigns, the greedy business magnets of the past. And it also serves to conceal um, the less altruistic business practices. So it's a lie and that shielding works. The press generally is all in on it. They're able to avoid scrutiny from the press by taking these stances. And they just don't think about the fact that half the consumer base is not aligned. They just aren't. And that insulting your consumer is is not the way to go. Yeah. Usually if you insult the consumer, they're going to reject the product. And they're catching a gigantic financial cold. So, Ava, here's my issue about this. What is wrong with using sexy women in bikinis to sell beer? Well, I, I think actually your your commentator explained it perfectly there. You are alienating half of your base. This is a Why, why would a, a woman a find that offensive? Well, hang on. This is a person here who apparently was in the boardroom for Levi, but doesn't understand that actually women are consumers and perhaps maybe they are going to now spend half of the business. You're, you know? you're not answering my question. Why, why would women be offended by attractive women posing in bikinis to sell beer? I'm not offended by attractive women. I am offended by men over-sexualising women. And I, I, do you know what? Do you know what it is? Piers, a lot of men can't control themselves. A lot of men think that if they buy that beer, well, they, this bud wrestling they are example. then entitled. I to think touch it celebrates women womanhood way. and it celebrates the the beauty of mud, which we all know is good for the skin. That's What's ridiculous. Wrong with it? Come on, Let, let's actually think. What are we watching here? What uh, has mud this wrestling. got to do with beer? Why am I going to buy this product? I'm a big. You know beer why? Drinker. Because it was a joke, and there used to be a time pre wokery uh, when you were allowed to just have a joke. The women were in on it. 
The men were in on it. Everybody laughed. Nobody got offended. Now people watch that kind of ad and they literally go nuts. I would argue they, that... they find themselves being electrified in, in a triggering manner. They have to go and hide in a safe space. Then they launch marches down main busy thoroughfares because of a joke. What has happened to that light hand on the tiller? Why do we care so much? Why have we now got to be exposed men to all these adverts doing a kind of reverse assault on us? Have you considered that maybe it's not all about men? Maybe there are actually a large proportion of females that would like to see adverts that don't include scandals. Why, are Bud Light, why is Bud Light's market cap dis disintegrating? Now, that's a, that's, a different, that's a different topic altogether. I think, mm. we could, I think you could see there is some merit in we don't need to sexualise women in order to sell beer. Well, women sexu you sexualise yourselves in lots of women's magazines and indeed in men's magazines. I don't think I did anything of the sort. Here, you may not have done personally. It's only a matter of time, Maybe though, Ava, now that you're a television superstar. Uh, when the money comes from GQ, off. I'm, I'm not saying you will, I'm just saying normally in my experience, that will happen. And then that is up to those men to buy those magazines and perhaps if they'd like to peruse it, they can. But it doesn't mean that women are going to buy them and have but a if look If you go at around me. the high street and look at to... women's magazines, there'll be lots of women in bikinis. And, that, and how unhealthy was that on a whole generation of women? No, now! It's, yeah, and how unhealthy is that? Why is it unhealthy? Because it sparked a whole generation of Nothing radiates of good disorders. health more than a very attractive, fit woman in a bikini. No, that's not rather true. Like, rather like, by the way, the way that women have for a very long time drooled over good-looking men. For example... No, that's totally think, different. Oh, I don't think so. Let's look at this wonderful oh. advert for Coke. Remember this? No slave. I don't want you to work all day But I want you to be true And I just want to make love to you Love to you See you tomorrow. 11.30. Mm -hmm. Love to you. I want to make love to you. Ava, I'm not aiming that at you. I'm just repeating what I've just seen <laughs> in the advert, which is a bunch of women drooling. Oh, and here's more. And you know what? It's oh, no, no. Let's watch some more. Love to you. All I want to do is wash your clothes. I don't want to keep you indoors. I mean, I kind of, if I was a, a lawyer in a court case, it would be, I have nothing more to offer, Your Honour. I rest my case. I think you enjoyed that more than I did. You know why I did this? It's because it, I enjoyed it because of the stinking hypocrisy. No, that's ridiculous. And by the way, because dynamic. most women I know, and I suspect you would be like this if we were off camera in a pub somewhere, you would laugh at stuff like this. It's just we're now forced because of this woke virus to take all these things incredibly seriously, to be incredibly offended. No one's allowed to laugh. No one can find these things humorous. No one thinks that women can fancy men or men fancy women. It's all evil. How did we get so boring, Ava? Are you joking? I don't know if you're actually joking. No, I'm serious. It's all about a power dynamic. You must be able to see that those women... What, were those women about the men? They are playfully laughing and just... It's all a good joke and we're all in I on it. I love the fact you're when trying to defend this. When we're talking about two no, no. women I love the fact, over each other... I love other. the fact you're trying to draw some distinction between what we're watching here. Let me bring back Jennifer. Jennifer, this to me just, I'm afraid, epitomises the rank double standard. Right, on the one... Can I suggest... Go on. I, th I think there's something that is in between where we're not objectifying women. And I would cite a Bud Light ad that ran just a few months ago uh, with Miles Teller and his wife that had the trademark Bud Light humor. It was funny. It, it demonstrated sort of an updated view uh, to masculinity and what it means to be a man. He's a good husband. He's charming. He's funny. He's dancing with his wife. And she's not scantily clad. They're having fun together. Um, he's not sort of shoving her out of the way to get to his beer. So I, I would agree with you. Humor works in advertising. Why do we have to abandon that? Why does it have to be so worthy? Why Nobody do we, wants why that Why do we get so prudish? Why can't we just also well, enjoy the male and female form? I mean, seriously. We certainly can. And I would say another ad, which you may be familiar with in the 80s, one of Levi's most successful ads that ran in the, the, the UK, featuring Nick Kamen for 501 Shrink to of 15. Course. I don't know if you remember this ad. One of the most successful of all time. It's a it's a good sort of analog to the to the, yeah. the Diet Coke one you ran because it's funny, it's cheeky. Um, there's little old ladies that they think he looks cute when he takes his pants off in the laundromat. No one's objectified. It's funny, but here's the other thing. Of course, he's but being objectified, but nobody cares. Men don't care. But the 
Why but the we product is at the center. This is the problem. I'm not going to buy right. something because a female brewer from 200 years ago made it. Why do I care? You know what? If I, I saw care. a good, if I saw a good bit of mud wrestling on TV tomorrow, I'd go and buy that beer instinctively. <laughs> I would. Maybe. Just on principle. Just because it'd be so refreshing well, to see an ad that was actually a bit naughty and a bit funny. That, 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 that's fair. I think bringing humour back is, is important. We've forgotten, I, agree, I think, Jennifer, like, probably... honestly, I think we have forgotten how to laugh. Wokery is where comedy goes to die. Laugh. And this is Certainly the problem. Forgotten We've forgotten how to have fun between the sexes and just to have a laugh. The old saucy postcards, on, they'll be coming for those next, the ones on the beach, on the resorts. They'll have to go. Can't have jokes about things like sex. Got to leave it there. Thank you, Ava. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate it. Please, can we bring back some humour? Can we just go back to having fun, having a laugh? No one's going to die. It's all fine.